Hi everyone, Emma here. I'm so excited to be back. I've been a little busy with doctor's appointments and uh, trying to get back into the pool. Um, our pool was closed. They closed when COVID happened and uh, there was a whole bunch of maintenance stuff they had to do. So it wasn't open again until uh, just like maybe a month ago. So yeah, I've been uh, busy getting my swims in so I wanted to talk to you today we want I wanted to specifically show you how to make this bracelet here but actually I have a whole bunch of stuff to show you so this is kind of um you know a kumihimo information session I guess so some of the things I've learned so to start with I wanted to mention this bracelet here I showed you that um how I made it using the bigger beads and placing, you know, taking it off of your disc and adding a large hole bead and then restarting it again. And I did completed it with adding this um, magnetic clasp. And I also used some uh, spacer beads here. I felt that the opening was too big for the clasp. So there's a bit of a tail of a, a weaved kumihimo in here. and um, But it's still, you could see gaps and stuff. So that's why I added the spacer bead. So that's an option too. But I used um, some glue that was not good at all. This stuff here, uh, Dazzle Tack. So when I went to test it 24 hours after I put the glue in, I went to pull this and the whole thing came apart. So I redid it with the E6000 and I just want to show you because it's huge. You know, you put a lot of work into this and then you have these lovely clasps and they you can't get them to stay on. So I knew that E6000 would work because I've used it for like leather strands inside a tube class like this so you can take a look I'm pulling really hard and it is not coming off at all so there's that I wanted to show you and let me um get my other light because that'll prevent any shadows from happening from my uh, hands because there's a part here I think it's this section here I didn't clean it up that well with the glue like from the glue so yeah you can see there's a lot of glue sticking on your clasp and again you know you put all this work in it you don't want glue everywhere so if you don't manage to get it cleaned up I love e6000 because you can go in there and you can actually just pick it off so I, I left a bit there so I could show you so I'm just using my nail to kind of push it down like that there so that got and you just wipe it after there's a little some pieces here and then just kind of rub it off and you can do this when it's wet too that's probably the smarter way to do it but sometimes that happens with me I'm doing a video so I don't want to be messing all the time with it so and yeah you just continue like this Look at how nicely that comes up. And if, you know, you can see there's a bit stick in there, you can take your tweezers and just kind of pick that off like that. And it won't, it won't damage the glue that's inside because the amount of glue we put on the inside is huge. So... Just a little piece here like that you can see and just peel it off and that's it so there you go I'll, I'll clean that up a little more you get the idea and then you have your lovely bracelet haha <laughs> the next one um let me let me think about this here let me just um talk about the idea is I wanted to um, create patterns using like beads that stick out so these are Megatama beads 
and I this was the idea was a lovely bracelet like this and that would be the something like that for the closure so what I did was I started out I think I did this is probably 15 beads on each strand to begin with and then I think it's 10 in this area here and then 15 again on this area but so I didn't follow any specific pattern and um, I can't remember what I did to get this lovely pattern. Isn't it pretty? This is my first try. I suspect there was a bit of pattern taking place. It looks like it's going down in a circle, but then there's the odd one that sticks out. So I think what I did was I um, put the Magatamas all on one strand and then I expected it to create a beautiful pattern. And as I'm starting to do more Kumihimo, I'm realizing that if you look at your disc, it, um, where's the one? Okay, so your starting position. Let me focus this here. So you start in this position, you start, so some people start differently. Let's just say there's a strand on either side of the one so you either start on the left and bring it down and then the the right and bring it down and then you turn your disc you can see the arrow <laughs> you turn your disc and then you do the same idea and you just keep going like that well if you think about it you're not actually doing one two three four you're doing where am i oh you're doing one two, three, four. So it, you have to start thinking the way your strands go before you start trying to design your own. So that's, woohoo, that was my um, crazy attempt. Okay, moving along. <laughs> the next one I want to talk about is this one here. This is the one where I showed you in the video, the last video, where I I added the bead. Now in the demonstration, I showed you where I I um I added each strand individually and put it back on the disc. And actually, what ended up happening is these beads got all loose. So then I had to sit there and kind of move them with my nail into the correct position and then move the bead down. The best way to do it is actually just to take the whole thing off. It doesn't matter where your strands end up on the other side of the bead that you're adding because it's not going to interfere with this. Once it's through here, these are pretty tight, these beads. Um, if you had a bigger hole where the strands actually moved around, it might have a bit of an effect on these ones. But most likely not. So that's that. So I I um I wanted to show you how to complete this one. That's why I left that one out. So we'll do that. Um, and this is the design completion that we're gonna do. So we're gonna add two of these large hole beads. We're gonna bring our strand. We're going to put it on, then we're going to bring our strand around and then come through just one of the beads and then add something. And what this does is it creates a, um, a variable length bracelet. So you can narrow this by pulling that bead forward. Now it's, it's super tight at this point, which is good because then it's going to keep everything nice and snug. But you can also just pull this strand here and it will go down or you can pull it back up again it's super tight but it's better to be tight so it's not falling apart so there's that one okay so, so let me just show you here's another we're gonna <laughs> we have a few maybe we won't get to them all I think we should this is like part of this design 
I have to say, trying to do a tutorial on Kumihimo is difficult because you don't want to watch me put beads on strands, eight strands, and you also don't want to watch me flip them back and forth. It doesn't really tell you anything. You need like the starting point, the midpoint, and the end. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here, and that's why I have different bracelets and different design uh, processes. So this next one here, and I will show you how to do this design with these little daggers. So I have the long strand. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to create this closure with that one. So this one is pretty much stationary with this bead. There's You, you can't move this. So it would be one size. But you could essentially have this all one so that you could move the whole thing. Like maybe put a knot at the top and then your your little tassels and then pull it and pull it tight so there is that option but we're going to do it this way and i have a few different little beads to show you for that one so i'll show you that one but so let's kind of start at the beginning even though we went all through from the very end to the beginning with the clasp this one here is the one i wanted to show you so this is incredible it turned out so amazing i am just stunned so i have to say this design is meant to give you a flat edge on your wrist and then these sticking out mini daggers on the outside and you can use pips you can use any type of little beads like this or even bigger if you want um yeah so this design is from CSL design and that's Christina Larson she I've searched everywhere on YouTube and I found a bunch of really amazing uh, um, Kumihimo people teachers like um, uh, Prue and I can't remember her last name but her channel name is Prumihimo and uh, so I found a bunch of them honestly I found Christina's the best for understanding and she gives you she'll show you the disc and what you have to put on each line for a different design and she leaves it open like that so you can do a screenshot and see where things are and then do it yourself and really really um, easy to understand and follow so definitely take a look I have the link in the description and uh yeah so thank you so much christina this has been so much fun and this one turned out amazing i did do one of her designs where she uses a four millimeter pearl and um i think three or four 11 seed beads and i did it but it didn't turn out the way hers did but you know what since i've been doing some of these i think i need to try it again i should be able to get it and if so, I will do a video on that one. So this is the one. This turned out amazing. Just happened I had like one button left with these leaves. So this looks like leaves. It looks like, um, it either looks like leaves or it looks like the, um, the branches on pine trees. And then the lovely terracotta uh, beads on the end. And of course, this is, you can adjust the size for this one so let's take a look at my disc I have a disc ready to show you so that I'm basically showing you her design let me um, bring this out because uh, you need to see the numbers on the disc this is basically her design if you're um, interested i would highly recommend going to her site and taking a look this one i don't remember what it's called let me see if i can yeah it'll take too long to find it she has a lot of videos so um yeah take a look at her design it just search her channel name in kumihimo and then check this one has a flat bottom with the little daggers on top so there is a specific pattern for each 
line. So I'm going to show you that. But before we start, what I wanted to show you is because of the design, the way I do these bracelets with this part here of the kumihimo being your clasp, you, I did find that you needed to leave a bit of a distance here. Otherwise, it, if you don't, you know, if you only get your button attached a bit, then there's not enough space for this piece to sit around your button. So then it's on top of your beads. So that's your preference. If you like it like that, that's fine. But this gives me some space here. So that's what I've done to start out in here. So that's why I have, and I don't put a lot, just enough to get your button in there. And when you start your button, so your button's going to be right up flush. I don't know why it's sticking there. Right up kind of flush to the disc, the top of the disc. And when you look at these strands as you're doing it, the first maybe two rounds that you do, it looks really weird. All you have to do is take your button from the bottom and just get your nails in there, your little fingers, and just pull it down a bit and the, the lines will all straighten out. So just a little tip on that one. So let's go. Now, because I started already, I needed to know which one was my next strand. So that's why I have it in this position. This is actually this. So they just because you always put your, your next strand down and then you know where to go next. So I would go to this strand next and put it up. So we'll actually do it in that direction. So I always, I know that. So if I've stopped for some reason, like in between adding something, um, and if I'm just adding my beads, what I always remember to do is pull this strand up, add the bead and then bring it back down. Just because, I mean, it doesn't really matter where you start, but I just like to make it even. <laughs> So, <laughs> who knows? So let's just take a look at these strands here. I'm just going to try and get them in the order. Definitely take a look at her. Her page is a lot better than me trying to explain it. So, just to give you an idea how different things are, I'm just going to move these up. Now, these beads, the thread I'm using is that flat one millimeter waxed cord that I bought from AliExpress. Um, it works great for this. You do have to cut your strands on an, on an angle to get your beads on. And they are, some of them are a little stiffer than others, but I did find that if you took one of the beads that has a narrow hole and move it up and down, it will narrow your, your strand the way you need it. So. Okay, so let's see here. They're still not in order here. So this strand actually goes to the top strand. So again, this is, you're probably gonna wanna watch this on her video. So you have a situation where you have one bead, then three of your um, daggers, then one bead, three, one, three, and you do that all the way along for nine times of the three daggers and you end with a 11-0 uh, bead. So here's the part when I was doing this that I figured of the whole thing is they seem to go in patterns of nine. So having said that, a pattern of nine gives you a bracelet that's about my size. So you might want to increase it by patterns of 10 or 11, maybe 12. I doubt it 12 because it's not just the three that you're adding or the four that you're adding. It's every strand you're adding that. So that really gets your length. So probably 10 and I do have one, actually the the um, turquoise one, I think I did 10 multiples of 10 on this. So I think this one is actually pretty, pretty big. So we'll get to that one. Okay, so the first one, one in threes. The second one, 
you start with two daggers and here's the difference just pay attention to her design when you go to her page is what you're starting with so you're not starting with a seed bead you're starting with a dagger so two and two two and two all the way long for nine and remember what you're ending with so you're ending with a uh, seed bead two seed beads then the next one is two in one so again it may not make much sense to you but you can see i've made a couple of them now and it works amazing so again thank you so much to her and you know what i just noticed Oh no, these are threes. Okay, so this one starts with two and one seed bead. And then the rest are all threes and one seed bead. And then when you get to the end, it's two. Okay. So let's go to the next. Let's just go this way here. So now these ones here. I doubt very little that you could follow my instructions in this placement part but i'll just point out the tips i totally recommend you go to her site and just do a screenshot and then try and follow so this one has two at the beginning one seed bead three and then it goes three one three all the way down and then it ends it ends with one dagger then the next strand starts with a one so these if you look at the the first couple of beads that's the important part of the design um, so just be aware of that so if it has one dagger and one bead follow it exactly otherwise the whole thing will be off and then it goes into the threes and then how she explained it too is if you notice there's one here but we're putting sets of three if you think of your design as three and one then you've got one here then at the end you have two and you you could essentially put one seed bead at the end i don't think you need it because by this time you're done so then we go to this was the single one that from that had our bottom one the very first that we went through this one has two seed beads two daggers and all the way along two 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 and ending with two daggers and then and I will show you a few strands of putting this through to get an idea you might think that it's hard to put the daggers in position and keep them in position it's actually not it's just the way the holes are it gets them to sit perfectly so that the daggers seem to want to point out all the time so that's awesome so this one here has and that's on this part of your disc this one here has one seed bead and three and it's that pattern throughout oh and i'm just noticing there's a short so i noticed with these beads i have a whole bunch of these mini daggers i noticed there was a lot of like kind of De deformed ones I don't think you'll notice that in a whole bracelet and I'm not sure I want to take this off but I might because I'm obsessive <laughs> then this is the last one this one starts with three daggers one seed bead and goes three daggers one seed bead all the way along right to the end and again there are intervals of nine so you do that nine times um for the the turquoise one i added a tenth row of at the end of everything so whatever the design was if it was something like this where it was the two and two i added the two and two at the end so let's take a look at what we have so again like i said because i i put this line down to to keep my spot and then I added the beads. So now I want to take this one back and put my bead down and bring it down. So we're just going to go ahead. So I'm just going to 
the next bead just happens to be a red bead here seed bead so we'll get that down and just they they are a bit sticky because the um the thread is waxed so just go like that and i use my finger so if i think the bead's gonna pop out i just put my finger there and then put my strand and it usually works to as long as it's just against that so then I'm going to take my bottom one and put it to the top. Just make sure I've got the one, right one here. So I just grab the next one. And you can see the, these daggers are a bit sticky. They're, um, you know, the, the holes are small. So get it down in there as much. Now, I'll tell you at the beginning of this, it might be a bit frustrating because you think uh, every bead, I'm going to be moving my hands and trying to get it in position and stuff. You know what? You will not believe how fast things start to move once you get the hang of it. So there you go. It's kind of in position there. There's probably like a little bit of more thread it could go through, but sometimes when you just hold this thread or bring your finger over and then pull the strand, it puts it in position. So just like that. You can see that's all you have to do. I'm just gonna move my button down so that the strand goes downward so you get a better idea of what I'm doing. Okay, then turn the disc and I'm gonna put my finger there. That's gonna hold that one from popping up. Grab the next strand and we're going to do another dagger. So this will be good. You'll get it to see what the daggers do on this. So there it could probably go a little more, but I'm not going to worry about it because once I pull on this, it will slide into position. So I'm just going to put my thumb over it and you see how it's nicely in position. So now we're going to do our lower to the top. And this is what we have. And you can use, like, take this hand off, this one here, and just push it down. But you'll see as you get going, you get faster. It's really not necessary. So I'm going to, it's already in the spot that I want it. I'm going to use my fingers to hold it in there. And sometimes, like, it looks like this thread is kind of wonky. So I'm just going to hold everything and just pull that a bit tight and make sure it's there. So turn your disc. We'll do one more up and down. So take your this strand here and get your dagger. And get it down there like that. Put your finger pop that in place, grab the one at the 17, and it's going to be a bead, and push that all the way down, get it in there, and put your thumb and close it off like that, and let me just put this down here. So that's what we have so far. Um, I'm going to turn and I'm going to just bring this strand down. I'll know that it's actually, you know what, I will bring this the bead down with it so I don't miss it. That would suck if I went to start it again. And I picked this color red this time with the green to represent Christmas. So I was trying to figure out like maybe a holly bush or something like that. I was trying to figure out a way to actually put... <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh like Christmas lights or something <laughs> so I wanted to put like different color beads through I'm like clearly I can't put lights on a bracelet <laughs> why don't they have beads that have lights in it other than Swarovski's <laughs> so that's that and you can see it's starting to come along so this is really exciting so you can see there's the fat flat spot 
with the red beads and then this so yeah I'm definitely getting in the Christmas mode you know what I think I get into the Christmas mode early because my sister Sylvia's birthday is December 1st so I um I start like Christmas shopping for her which is really birthday shopping okay so let's let's do this one first I think so this scene that we're doing these so this these were rose um frosted rose beads and it's really unfortunate because the line I didn't have any pink I wanted pink and actually I just got it and I'll mention this to you um so I ordered every color that they had and um there's a few colors I should show you so first of all the pink is nice but it's waxed so you get like different variations of like it's a bit faded here to the rest but you know what I'm sure once I start weaving it into something it's going to look amazing but um so here's one I ordered orange oh god you're not going to believe this is not the color that's showing like what you're seeing this is you know the workman's jackets that they wear that bright bright orange that's what this is so I'm thinking, um, yeah, how am I going to use this on a bracelet? I was thinking maybe pumpkins or Halloween or whatever. And I'm like, why do I need that much thread? So that was a bit of a, a miss. And then the other thing, I almost did a return. And actually, I didn't uh, take the wrapper off of these guys. So I ordered... This was the original blue that I had and then they had a light blue and they had like a um, pastel blue and you can see these two blues are almost identical. So I was really kind of annoyed with that part of it. The colors were not accurate to the picture. So the only reason I'm showing you these is to let you know. The other thing, I think the pink in the picture looked a lot darker. So, I mean, I, I'm happy with it, but um, definitely the blue. Uh, who knows? I may be doing a giveaway with one of them because I, I don't know why I would need two of the same color. There's, I have, I have ones that I bought 10 years ago that are still, oops, tons of stuff. So, anyway, I wanted to make sure to tell you that because these, those, um, Threads are amazing. I love them. So if you're going to buy them, just be aware the colors are not uh, a huge difference in some of the like some of the blues and stuff like that. So let's let's get to it. So I left it on here. Um, this is the tassel one. OK, so this is the one we want to recreate. So we I think I did extra here as part of the bracelet so let me see if I can get an idea what it's like on my wrist so it this would be my wrist size for sure so I think I made it longer to make it for somebody else because um, every kumihimo bracelet I've made so far I'm like I'm keeping it it's mine I'm like I have I have like 20 of them now so I'm like I think I need to start making them bigger sizes for other people so let's take a look at the seven and a quarter so yeah yeah let's do it to the seven and a quarter so that means we're going to create a loop at this end here that goes around the button um i think we can i'm just going to pinch it with my fingers and just take everything off like that let me adjust the lighting because that disc is so bright like that I have to tell you, so I did, I must have seen this video on, um, 
Pinterest on how to do kumi. It was like friendship bracelets, right? So it was using a kumi hemo disc. So it's basically doing this stuff here, right? So I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute, I can make one of those discs. <laughs> Look what I made. So these are those sheets. You can get them at the dollar store. They're like foam sheets for craft projects and stuff. So I am I think it's hilarious. I didn't even cut it like properly <laughs> in a circle. And then look at like all the numbers and like I've got three. But you know what? I made a ton of bracelets like that look like this using floss in different colors and designs. And I sold them at the yoga studio. I was selling them for $5 each. And they were going like hotcakes. Everybody wanted one. So anyway, I just thought I'd show you. And then to get something funnier is I ordered this. I don't. I might have ordered this on Beataholic when they were going out of business. I'm looking at this going, who needs a disc this size? But I'm sure there's some really elaborate designs that you would use this big disc for. So it's professional braided jewelry that's that's what it's for <laughs> so, okay let's get to it okay so let's see how much we need so we're actually going to measure kind of the width of the the button like that and then double that so just fold it over so now what I want to do is, and then test it on your button to make sure. So um, I might just give it a little bit more because once we start bringing these threads through the kumihimo, it's going to tighten it a bit. So there, that's better. Okay, so let's... Um, I'm trying to... Oh, we have a bead in here. So let's see. I I have two beads. Um, this one looks a little too big for that. But I'm wondering if we can make this adjustable. Okay, so let's start back here. First of all, I'm going to cut... All these I use knots to keep my beads on I was doing um, using the the little um, the little discs that you pop open and put your thing on I just find them too cumbersome so I just put knots at the end and I don't find that my thread gets knotted so so I'm just putting this through to I think it was probably about here and then I'm going to bring this back through and we're going to see how good this stays in place if it's snug then that's that's what we want if it's loose then we'll have to try a different bead It's just so yeah it's pretty do you know what it's not bad I think we should try that because that way it can extend pretty easily so yeah let's do that and let's see where our button so you could actually make this a bit shorter for the button but again you know you can move it up and down so Okay, so I'm going to take a few strands and I'm going to bring them around and knot them around the kumihimo. You can also um, weave them in. And I'm just thinking maybe I should, because we do need, we only need four strands left at the end to add our tassel to. So let me put four aside and the other four we will weave in. I think that, that's not gonna work. 
if we weave it in, then we can't open and close it. So I think what we'll do is take two on one side, two on the other, like this. Create a knot and that will, you can still move the knot up and down. Like that. that. I'm going to add one more knot and then I'm going to bring it around to the front with the other strands and I think what we'll do is create a knot at the front with these guys like one knot and then we can cut the the extra four extra strands. So let's just just double that over like that, hold through, and then try and get it as close to your bracelet as possible. And you know, somewhat nice looking as well, because you're gonna see that like that. And in there like that so let's see look at that you can still move it up and down you have to be careful not to move it right off the end sometimes what I'll do if you're concerned about that is before we did this knotting I would put a bead on your clasp and that will prevent this from pulling all the way off Little little trick. So let's get these beads and create some tassels. And so initially I was gonna cut four of them, but let's see if we can do two on one strand. And that way we don't have to cut. I don't like to cut strands unless I know they're secured, so I think actually these are going to go through pretty easy. So we might, I'm just going to bring them flush and see if I can get them on an angle. So we're going to do a couple of these. I think these are Matubo beads. They definitely look it. So I would recommend four to three, and on this design here, I did some with four and some with three to give them different lengths. So you can see this is two strands and this is going on pretty nicely. And I might have to fix these. No, they're going on pretty good. Let me tilt this a bit. So you can see what I'm doing. There. So that's those. Let's do, I don't know, do I want to do two of these? I think one is probably enough, this one. So this one I might have a problem getting the two strands in. Nope, it's gone in easy, easy peasy. So let's bring it up to the top and see what it looks like. <laughs> That's nice, perfect. Okay, so I'm not going to like push it all the way to the top so that it has a bit of give to kind of dangle, but we're just going to go ahead and create a knot. You can like do it this way or you could tie the two strands together and knot it, but I think I'm going to do it this way and then just cl clip it. So try and get it as close and as even as you can. 
Yeah, let's move these guys out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, bring these down. And let's get the other strand kind of even like that. And tight. And then clip it. There. It'll get looser with wear. It's just that waxed cord is a bit funky. So let's get this, these two here. Okay, so we've used those greens, so we'll leave those aside. And you don't want too much around your wrist anyway, so just a few beads. Let's see if we can. Get these in there, so put these guys on. And here. Yep, this is going to work. It's hard to put these little beads on using your fingers like that. But I find the, the thread's not stiff enough to poke the beads on the mat the way you would normally pick beads up. Okay. The, I mean, the other option is to um, use a collapsible needle. But I'm pretty sure... to get this again. Let's see if I can at least get it started. There. And one more that and we'll put this lovely one on. This one's a little tight so I'm just going to try and spin it as I'm pushing it on and that's working. So I did three on this one. Oh, there's the fourth one. Good. So that. Bring this around. And bring your knot in tight. There. Oh, this is going to be really pretty. Okay. I'll try and bring the other two just slightly longer. Let's see if we can get these guys. I think I'll try five on this, this one. I'm going to try it this way. <laughs> Use the one strand first. And then the others. working great. There. So I did five on this one. I want to use this one. This is really pretty. 
these were um, from Dee Dee's beads, but I don't think she has any more. And I bought a b bunch of different color sets, and um, I actually prefer this blue set the best because the beads are teeny tiny. I just find they're so much easier to use for tassels and stuff. The other ones I have are quite big. I'm oh, just looking to see if I had it, but it's on the other side of the room. Let's bring this closer. And that. <laughs> this is so cute. It's like some animal. <laughs> cool. I'm, do you see how <laughs> excited I get? <laughs> I uh, I had a lot of crappy stuff going on with medical appointments and uh, it really is starting to stress me out and I'm trying to exercise more and so I'm doing less I'm doing a lot of beating but you know what doing it by myself is not as much fun as doing it with you guys <laughs> And it may sound so weird because I'm sitting in a room by myself doing this talking. But it's it's like as soon as I post the video, people start commenting. I'm always surprised. I'll check. Like it'll say video two seconds ago. And there's like four or five views already. I'm like, how is that possible? <laughs> Look at this one. I thought it were gorgeous. But I think that one needs... Oh, there's this one. So let's do, let's do it this way so that it dangles the correct way. Oh, we got to put the other thread through. So let's do that. Got all excited. Okay, bring those guys out. So that's the other reason why this these little tassels are a bit stiff, because there's two strands. I would recommend using one strand, but like I said, I don't like cutting unless I know that it's woven in and glued and whatnot. So this was my alternate plan. <laughs> I just came up with it. There we go. Okay, those are in place. Okay, and we are going to go down See if I can do these in one. Down here. Yeah, it's not going to work. Let me see. I don't think this is the this one's really narrow, so I might have to try it separately. So I try and pull the strands down on this bead and then bring And get it started 
and then start to pull oh, let me see if that makes a difference And see if I can hold this together and then push so that the thread will kind of grab onto the other thread that worked. So it's coming out. Let's just push that on. See, it's coming out. Right on there. Oh, this is going to be lovely. This one should be fine. It's a big hole. Want that to move there threads everywhere and let's see what we have put that on <laughs> this is cute oh this turned out nice so there we go, there's that one. And let's move these guys over. And that one, like that. So let me show you, we're right at the one hour mark, but let me show you the last one. This one should go a little quicker. So for this one, where's my example? This is the example here, what we want. So we're going to put both beads on. So we have these two beads and then this will be our movable bead. So again, we're going to take our kumihimo, we're going to pinch it just to hold the strands and then pull everything off. I'm gonna cut all these knots off. And we're gonna get these two going. Okay, so it's gonna go down, down to the bottom. We're gonna take this strand again, so these guys here. And we're going to go through the first one, and that will create our loop. So, I think on this one, what I did was I used my, I might have to, yeah, there's not a lot of space there. So, let's open this up. And I used my flat nose pliers, and I squished down the kumihimo so that I could get the strands through. So probably about here so that's you know all you have to do it's not going to move that much but you can see a bit of narrowing there like that so yeah so now you can kind of see a bit of a gap that we can get these strands in we might have to do this in a couple of sections here and what I did too was I mashed down the end so that it would fit through. We'll see. I because we want it to dangle a bit like this one. So there was a bit of mashing going on. <laughs> so let's see if we can get a few strands through. Okay. 
And again, one of the ways you can do it is hold your thread there, but then push your beads going in the other direction. And you can see the strands are right there. So that's awesome. Let's bring it down a bit to make sure they don't come out. And move that down. Let's get these last three strands in there. Kind of smooth it out a bit. And I'm going to move these guys over so they're not in the way. There's not a lot of room left, but we're going to sneak them in there like that. And then push these over top and push the bead forward and it will hold it in place. Like that. So there's the three strands. Pull those through. So just hang on to this piece here and pull all your strands through. You might have to do them one at a time. You see how they're all bunched up there. One more sticking out here, not sure which one it is. Maybe it's this one. There. There. Perfect. So actually there's not a lot left down here like in this one so I think we'll just leave it because we need that to go around this button yeah let me just pull it a bit to so it's snug let's see if we can get these through that bead Not that we really need it now because there's not enough. I didn't do enough of this part to add. This is a big bracelet though. Let's see if I can cut this to get through. This bead. And you could do some sort of weaving if you wanted to. So I'm trying to decide if to put a dangle or not. I, I think I'll just leave the strands and create a knot here. And cut that. It's hard to cut them all at the same time. They're very slippery. So there is this one here. That. And this one. So there you go. Thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. I'm so excited. <laughs> so maybe I can figure out a Christmas Christmas ball one <laughs> next to go on the uh, the holly. Oh gosh, I need help. Then this one, that one. There we go. Open this up a bit. Oops, wrong way. Again, thank you so much for joining me. This was a lot of fun. 
Take care, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.